just to welcome everybody on a very early stage of the Labour Friends of Cyprus and say a few words about the importance of inclusivity, the importance of working together and so on. Why don't you come up here? First of all, thank you very much and uh, thank you for inviting me. And Mr. Liss is a very dear, very old friend of mine who started his uh, political life and career, an adult career, working in my office on the Seven Sisters Road. And look what happened to him. <laughs> So, Vasilis, thank you very much for all that you do. And I'm very happy to launch this, uh, this event tonight. I represent a constituency that uh, includes people from Cyprus, very large numbers of people from Cyprus, both Greek and Turkish Cypriot people living in the constituency. And before that, I was a councillor in Haringey representing Green Lanes Ward or Green Lanes area, which, has, as you know, has a very large number of people from Cyprus, many of whom I remember arriving in 1974 after the invasion took place and trying to help them to get some place of stability. And I think the contribution made to um, our community and life by people that came from Cyprus that time is truly incredible. And I want to thank them for the vibrancy they brought to this country and the energy they put into developing jobs and businesses in Britain. There has to be a reunification of the island. There has to be a resumption of the talks. I thought we were about to, uh, almost there, not so long ago as ever, and once again it was um, stopped at the last minute. I just appeal, can we now resume the talks straight away? Resume the talks to bring about the reunification of, uh, of the island of Cyprus so that um, the division can be put behind us and people be allowed to return to their homes and the places that they've lost. I think the campaign on Cyprus over all these years has been incredible and the pain of older people that have um, died without seeing the island reunited and still going through the pain of what happened in 1974 is something that isn't going to be easily forgotten. Having a campaign on Cyprus, having a sense of unity about Cyprus is very important to me. I recognise that Britain is a guarantor power from the 1960 treaty and I want a Labour government to make sure that we carry out our responsibilities to ensure that that guarantor means the island of Cyprus is reunited as one and that there be a form of government, an agreement on the sharing of power that does ensure communities can live together. Because you know what? Communities can live together perfectly well, providing they each have their rights, each have respect for those rights, and people understand that in asserting your own rights, it also means respecting the rights of others. That I know we can achieve, and that I want a Labour government to be in office to achieve. Thank you very much for inviting me today. And now I'd like to call the Shadow Education Secretary, Angela Rayner. And when we get there, it is power with a purpose. And that purpose, Jeremy, absolutely outlined. And that's that in regards to Cyprus, as, as Jeremy says, in 1960 and before that, until this day, we have a responsibility to enable that every child in Cyprus gets those opportunities to know their heritage and to be in a place where they feel safe, where they have the ties that you have and they have peace and we have to ensure that we do find a solution so that those things are enabled for everybody and I wanted to be here today just to to welcome you to Parliament and to give you my solidarity as a member of Parliament to say that we will be with you to ensure that that peace and that that solution is found that we cannot move away from our responsibilities with that. So thank you for listening. I do have to run off in a second. And I'm sorry I'm wearing sunglasses. I damaged my eye last week. And Jeremy looked after me so that I could be here <laughs> again this week. But thank you for listening. And, you know, solidarity and peace to, to you all. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, Stephen Doughty. I'm the uh, Member of Parliament for Cardiff South. Um,
Penarth, and those of you who know Cardiff, and particularly the docks communities, will know um, a very, very long-standing, historic, fantastic Cypriot community there. I'm very lucky to have one of the, uh, the Orthodox churches right in the heart of my constituency, and indeed, um, we actually often hold our constituency Labour Party uh, barbecues and meetings and socials <laughs> at the Greek Cypriot Centre in uh, Cardiff Bay. Uh, we have uh, Councillor Michael Michael, who will be familiar to many of you, who's now serving on the Cabinet of Cardiff Council, actually taking forward a really exciting um, agenda for the city. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a community, I think, that has contributed a huge amount to that really diverse uh, part of Cardiff and the Cardiff docks, where we've got mosques, Hindu temples, um, synagogue, Orthodox church, Catholic, Protestant, all together in that one community, showing that people can, as Jeremy said, live alongside one another, um, contribute to society and live in peace and harmony with one each other, respecting each other's differences, respecting each other's different um, cultures and religions, uh, but able to make a contribution. So I'm really, really proud of the, uh, the role that Cypriot community plays in my community. And I'm also delighted that finally, um, two years ago, I had a chance to visit Cyprus myself. Um, I had a fantastic time. Um, was made to feel very, very welcome. Uh, um, what, a, what a beautiful country it is. Uh, what, a, what a warm welcome I had. Um, but also um, had a chance to, to visit the Green Line to see um, that legacy of, of conflict and division. And, and just wanted to be here today with you all to show that solidarity, both with Cypriots living here, but with Cyprus as a whole. And very much a hope that, that we can see that peace um, and reconciliation continue um, on the island and um, bringing together all communities. Um, so uh, very, very best wishes from Wales. Um, you'll always have friends um, in Cardiff and it's a real delight to be here with you tonight. Fantastic. <laughs> Steve McCabe, Birmingham. My name's Steve McCabe. I'm the uh, Member of Parliament for Selly Oak in Birmingham, which you can almost certainly tell from my Birmingham accent. And uh, Roger and I, who are both Birmingham MPs, were just debating who should go first there. Look, uh, I just want to say it's a pleasure to be here tonight at the launch of uh, Labour Friends of Cyprus. I think the, the first political speech I made after being elected as an MP in 97 was actually on the issue of Cyprus. And I didn't really think at that time that 20 years later we'd still be here stuck with the the same problems. But uh, as Jeremy says, there was hope in the summer. It came to nothing, but we have to hope that it will resurrect itself. Look, it's simple as far as I can see. Cyprus is one island. It's one member of the European Union, something that we'd like to be as well, but that's a different subject. It's one member of the European Union. There is no space for two, for two uh, states, there is space for some kind of negotiated arrangement about how uh, the politics on the island work, but that's a different issue. Uh, Cyprus has to be seen as one entity, and as far as I'm concerned, what we need is a situation where people can live together in freedom and tolerance, and the way we're going to achieve that is through talks. Now, I recognise that after 40 odd years, we can't go back to where we were. Everybody, however painful it is, must know that's the case. There will have to be some negotiation, there will have to be some compensation, there will probably have to be some give and take. But we cannot persist with the situation as it is. We cannot persist with a divided island. We cannot persist with 30,000 troops in one part of the island. That isn't reasonable. And I hope that what we're witnessing tonight is the start of people in this country who want to see a proper reconciliation, who want to see the island able to work together, who want to see the communities able to live side by side, as they do in many parts of the UK. I hope that what we're witnessing tonight is the start of a fresh impetus here that will help to influence the outcomes and bring us to the resolution that we all want to see. And I want to do anything I can to help. Thank you. Joan Ryan from Enfield North needs no introduction on the question of <laughs> Um, I'm sure many of you in this room are, are from Enfield as well, because um, Enfield, somewhat like Catherine's constituency, 
um, build in Edmonton are uh, a bit of a little cypress, uh, which is to our great pleasure and our advantage. Many of you in this room I've considered friends for a very long time. I don't know why it's taken so long for us to do this, but Vasily, thank you for making this happen. Labour Friends of Cyprus should have been in existence a very long time ago because we are friends and we have been friends for very many years. Um, I'm very conscious that in Enfield we have a Greek Cypriot and a Turkish Cypriot community and we don't have a division. They live together. People live together, they respect each other, they work together and indeed some people uh, enjoy a social life together. That is a fantastic example that we set to say to Cyprus and the rest of the world, look, it, it can happen. These communities have more in common than divides them. And we see that in the communities in Enfield and other parts of the UK. I hope as this group grows in strength and in influence within the Labour Party that we see a group, a Labour Friends of Cyprus, that is strongly about Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot communities here in the UK coming together within Labour Friends of Cyprus to do all that we can for the community here and for a just and peaceful settlement in Cyprus. Now, I just wanted to say a, a word or two about, yes, we were very disappointed in July when what looked so tantalisingly close then fell apart. But we know that in the end, self-determination, unity will prevail. And we have to stay with that agenda. And so I was reading what the Turkish Foreign Minister, Mevlut Kavusolu, said. This outcome shows the impossibility of reaching a settlement within the parameters of the UN. No use in insisting on them. We do insist on them. He is wrong. We do insist on them. And I hope that's fundamental to this group, that that's exactly what we do. And I welcome uh, what both the President of Cyprus has said about time for <laughs> reflection, not uh, a time to make, to stoke things up. You need to step back and reflect, have a little introspection on where we go from here. And I welcome what the European Union Foreign Policy uh, Chief, Frederica Mogherini, has said. There was sufficient substance to continue the process when the political conditions are right. We hope to receive the United Ireland as an EU member state. And the solution of the Cyprus issue must be consistent with and compatible with the EU security architecture and the European acquis. Yeah. Yes, I agree. That is right. That must be fundamental to our approach uh, as well. What is our role in that? Jeremy has talked about us as a guarantor power. Our role in that must be to do all we can do to show that there is sufficient substance to continue the process when the political conditions are right. What can we do? This is where our discussions need to go forward in this group. What can we do as a group? Working with the other organisations such as the Federation, what can we do to ensure that those conditions are right? What is our part in that? Because I've said before, this must be by Cypriots for Cypriots. But that's not a get-out clause for anybody else, and certainly not for Labour Friends of Cyprus. I look forward to our future based on Labour Party politics, principles and values, Labour Party policy, and friendship with Cypriots and Cyprus. Thank you. Friends. My name is uh, Roger Godseth. I'm Member of Parliament from 
Birmingham Hall Green, the next door neighbour to uh, Steve McCabe. And I'm here tonight, albeit very briefly, just to um, show my solidarity with you and to welcome the formation of this new group. I only have a small Cypriot community within my constituency, but I do have a much larger, a much, much larger Kashmiri community. And that community comes from a part of the world which was divided, and I've seen the repercussions with the division um, of Kashmir and the way the Kashmiri people in my constituency fight to keep alive the arguments of self-determination. And as my parliamentary colleagues have said, self-determination is what is a human right for everybody in the world, and not least for the people of Cyprus. Now, unfortunately, as I've said, I can only be here for a few minutes because I'm torn between uh, solidarity with the Cypriots and uh, hosting a sake evening next door. Um, <coughs> so um, I will have to leave after I've spoken, but I very much endorse what my colleagues have already said. I stand with them completely, and I wish you all well with your campaign in the future. I have a particular interest, of course, in Cyprus, in the fact that my son, uh, three months ago, married in Cyprus, a Cypriot girl. We all went there, had a great time, a wonderful place, a wonderful island, one of God's gifts to the world. I'd like to go back at some time when the islands reunited so that I can see the other part of the island, and I'm sure that will happen. So I wish you well and good luck in the future. Thank you. Dan Carden, one of our 2017 intake. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I am a new MP elected uh, this time round, and I bring solidarity from Liverpool. I'd also like to pay tribute to the work Alan Meal did. Many of, them, many of you will know him and the hard work he put in uh, and visits to Cyprus. Uh, during his career in Parliament. Um, I was able to raise the issue today in the House of Commons just to ask the government to redouble their efforts and to put the human rights of all Cypriots at the heart of negotiations going forward. So thank you very much for having me. I look forward to developing uh, a long-lasting relationship. And I think it's a great initiative uh, that you started here tonight. And I'm delighted to see people I've met uh, at meetings previous to this. Thanks. Hello, thank you, and thank you very much for your warm welcome. Um, I have a confession to make that I've never actually been to Cyprus, so my knowledge has been based on um, having received the invitation that I read a little bit. And what I would say to you is, it looks like a lovely country with beautiful people, but with an ugly history. And that's really sad, because I think that it's a country that deserves to be united. And I come here tonight to give you my solidarity and show you that anything that I can do as an individual to actually help you, then I'm more than happy to do. And thank you for your warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's uh, Hugh Gaffney. I'm a Member of Parliament for Coatbridge Christ in Bells Hill. Now, where's that? It's just in north of Glasgow. It's actually between Glasgow and Edinburgh. And I call it the heart of Scotland because we're in the middle. I'm one of the seven Scottish new Labour MPs down in Westminster. Six of us gained our seats from the SNP, the Scottish National Party, and we have torpedoed their ship, and their ship is sinking. Yay. We are known as the Magnificent Seven. Yep. I don't think I'm Yul Brunner yet, <laughs> but we might go for a shave. I'm... I'm um, we know this is Magnificent Seven, we work hard to stand up for Scotland, but also so important to stand up for the value of social democracy, socialism, togetherness, fairness, equality, and understanding that binds us all together as members of this great Labour Party. That's what we are, we're a Labour family, we're a Labour Party. We should also be proud of our party and the voice and the support that is given to people from all over the world for many years. It's championed rights, 
civil liber liberties, it's challenged racism and bigotry, and it's shown that things can be done differently. Now, I should be honest, there's not a huge separate population in Coatbridge, Christon and Bells Hill, <laughs> but I wanted to sponsor this evening and I wanted to come along tonight to give you my love from those same people. Because one thing we do believe in is humanity. I pledge my support to the people of Cyprus as we work our way through this Brexit process and beyond. And I also support the work of the Labour Friends of Cyprus group who will, will do over the coming years. And to say thank you. Thank you for the culture, the history, the lessons, the diversity that Cypriots from across Cyprus have brought to our country. Your contribution is valued, celebrated and welcomed, and we we'll look forward to it growing in the coming years. A special mention to my 2017 intake brother, Bambus, as we know him. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> great man, great contribution, and doing great sterling work. Isn't it great to have a separate and a Labour man in Parliament? I mentioned the values that bring us together as members of the Labour family. And I just want to say a word about Europe. Those same values are reflected in our membership of the European Union and the European family. And I'm increasingly concerned about the government's lack of direction with Brexit. But let's hope we find some direction. Let's hope we sort some plan out. And let's hope we remain in some way always together. My socialism has no borders. I know that Labour will be working hard to protect those who own homes, move between Europe and the UK, and to have family in other parts of Europe. And I make that, part, that point 100%. You will always be welcome as far as in this country and the UK and across the borders. Lastly, I was sitting at my desk in Parliament this evening. I looked out the office window and looked at the flagpole in Westminster Abbey and saw the Cypriot flag flying proudly. <laughs> Absolutely delighted. Because what that did was give me happy memories. I've been to Cyprus twice with Paphos from my family and visiting and come back burnt. Because <laughs> in Scotland all we get is the wind and the rain. But I certainly look forward to going back to Cyprus and thank you very much for tonight. Thank you very much. How do you follow that? Um, <laughs> Huey's one of my favourites of the uh, 2017 intake, Aww. and uh, we've got some fabulous people there, people like Dan, uh, who will sort of uh, champion the cause of Cyprus. And I want to thank Vasily for actually setting up the Labour Friends of Cyprus. It's been much needed. It's been lacking in the previous years. So hopefully we'll be able to drive things forward. Um, so what will the Labour Friends of Cyprus do? Well. We need to start this to where we are at the moment. It was a huge disappointment that the Crowns Montana talks failed, um, but I think there's still hope there, because one of the things that were discussed at Crowns Montana were security and guarantors. Those are the two sticking points, but actually getting Turkey to talk about security uh, is a big issue. Now, I had a, the, the, the pleasure of going to Cyprus in August. Uh, I met with many, many people there. Um, I did lots of interviews, one of them at the actual airport, uh, which was uh, a bit surreal. Um, but the um, one of the things that came out was uh, that people are worried that um, there are very few chances remaining now to actually solve Cyprus. Um, and part of that problem is because our Turkish Cypriot friends feel that they're um, gradually um, being overtaken um, because of the settlers are outnumbering them. And we need to make sure that we do reach out to our Turkish Cypriot uh, brothers and sisters and then we actually try and support them uh, in actually trying to find a solution. So I think we need to be wary that uh, we need to reach out. 
it's not the ideal time uh, at the moment because we have elections in January. Uh, thing I lo things I love about Cyprus are that you can actually move an election because of a festival, which is uh, great. Um, the, um, the elections, for those that are not in the know, the elections are due to be on uh, the, first, uh, the first Sunday in February, but that coincided with the festival, and you couldn't move the festival, so you moved the election, yeah. which I think is the way it should be. <laughs> The carnival. Um, but I'm, I'm optimistic because I know that just looking at the people in this room and looking at my friends on the panel and the work that they've done over the years, that we still have a chance. And we need to put pressure uh, on the government uh, in the UK to do more to actually help uh, bring about a solution. Now, I remember going to demonstrations where um, Jeremy Corbyn was speaking um, um, at Trafalgar Square on the platform. His support for Cyprus has been 100% um, throughout the years. It's carried on throughout. So he's 100% behind Cyprus, as is Emily Thornbury, uh, as is the shadow team. It was even in our manifesto. So that shows Labour's commitment to Cyprus. Um, whereas the Tories are all over the place. And we need to put more pressure on them. We need to put more pressure on Boris Johnson, Adam Duncan, and the rest of the Foreign Office team to make sure that they come out and are in support of Cyprus. At the moment, they're being preoccupied with uh, Brexit and trying to find lots of uh, cunning solutions. But we need to make sure that they focus on Cyprus and actually make sure that uh, they're not allowed to forget what's happened. Uh, I've met a number of organisations and group in Cyprus. I've been thoroughly impressed by the work that is going on, by communal work. I've met with uh, Unite Cyprus now. They're an amazing group that actually do some fabulous stuff and try and build by communal links. They're not the only one. Uh, there's another group called Cypriot Puzzle. They do fantastic work. I've also met with the Commission for Missing People. There's still, we mustn't forget that there's still over 800 people who were missing, whose graves, we don't know where they are. Um, and we need to do more to actually try and find out where those graves are so we can actually reunite uh, people with their, with their loved ones so they actually have closure on what's happened. So I'm gonna try and uh, put out an appeal if people can actually find out where if, if they know anything, there's going to be some work that they're going to be doing, they're going to be meeting, they're going to be trying and trawling through all the records um, at Kew to actually find out if any of the field reports can identify any information. But obviously many people might have information they can bring forward. So we need to make sure that's also one of the aspects that isn't forgotten. It's a very humanitarian thing uh, that hopefully nobody will sort of be uh, against. And also we need to make sure that there's funding as well that comes from the government. Um, these are all things we can do. You heard Dan today, we had Foreign Office uh, questions, so Dan asked a question about Cyprus. The Labour Party will co continue putting its pressure on um, the government to actually talk about Cyprus. I've asked the Prime Minister two questions. We're all going to carry on doing that. We'll have debates about Cyprus, but it's also about the community as well. I'm only here because I was lucky enough to get elected um, in June of this year, uh, but I'm the first Labour, uh, Cypriot Labour MP. Um, there are many other people who support Cyprus who are sort of candidates. There's a couple of them at the back there. Uh, there's uh, Emma Weissel and Mike Katz and, who are candidates in Chipping Barnet and in Hendon. Uh, but there are other people who have also stood who are supportive of Cyprus and we need, we need to make sure that we give them support because we need as many friends as we can get. It's been way too long since Cyprus has been divided. We need a united Cyprus. Uh, we need to make sure that people that talk about partition are shouted down and we actually work to actually find a solution once and for all. I'm going to do whatever I can. I know my colleagues will do whatever they can as well. And I know that together we are going to sort of try and help find a solution for Cyprus and that we're going to try and make it work. So thank you for your support. I'm there for you as are all my friends and we'll do whatever we can for you. Thank you very much. MP. And tonight we've got the wonderful Caroline Flint. Caroline, a message of solidarity from you. Thanks very much, Catherine. I just put my head round the door to say <laughs> hi. And in uh, the good old Labour Party tradition, you're hoisted onto the platform. Look, I just want to say um, uh, my best wishes and solidarity uh, with the group that you formed, you know, the Labour Friends of Cyprus. And as a, a former Europe minister, I was really pleased to be able to get to know more about Cyprus and all the things that colleagues have spoken about. And many of you, I recognise familiar faces in the room, have raised with me over the years. I have to say, 
on my first visit to Cyprus as the new Europe Minister, I was advised by the Foreign Office that the last visitor minister had basically been run off the island, and that was Jack Straw. Um, <laughs> and fortunately, that did not happen to me. And, uh, and so, you know, when you have a ministerial brief, um, I think, you know, some, maybe some colleagues sort of leave it behind. I see all my uh, jobs in government, and I was very pleased to be part of that Labour government. Uh, they're almost my babies. I never leave them behind. I take an active interest going forward in what happens because some, some causes uh, actually do touch your heart. And there's so much about the cause of Cyprus and what's happened and what we still need to do with all of you uh, to tackle uh, what has happened over many, many years. So um, less is more, as they say. My best wishes for the group and, and I stand with you and I stand with colleagues and hoping for a much better future. Thank you. Just before I call our final speaker, Kate Osama, who's kindly organised the room this evening, I just wanted to check there are some elected members here. I can see Barry Rawling. Are you here, Barry? Wave. There he is. Leader of the Labour Group in Barnet, which will soon be a Labour Council, we hope. <laughs> Councillor Perai Ahmet, who's here. Wave Perai, so everyone knows who you are. <laughs> Very proud cabinet member and also Cypriot. And are there any other members? I can see Ali there. Alison Moore from Barnet. Hello, Ali. <laughs> and Ross Houston, of course, from Barnet. So we've got some wonderful reps from Barnet here. And have I forgotten anyone else? <laughs> Andreas from Barnet as well. Wow, fantastic. Good. So welcome to you all. Now, Before they finish. Um, but Kate's going to call a few speakers, including Vasilis, who kindly put the, uh, the publicity together for tonight's event. And maybe later on, a smaller group of us could meet together as a steering group, and Marcus, mm -hmm. to talk about how we want to, what agenda items we might like to have. I've also brought for the group the Cyprus Peace Process update from the House of Commons Library, and also some parliamentary questions, which um, I laid down, which I just thought some members might be interested in. And one final plug, Cypriots living here, You'd all be aware that we have a wonderful Greek Cypriot Centre in Earlham Grove in Wood Green. Cypriot Centre. <laughs> and we would love more support for this centre because it does fantastic work in reaching out to older people who are socially isolated. So could I just say, if you want to get involved, if you could donate anything, Susie Constantinides is your contact, and Chris Christodoulou, who is... Um, sadly going to be retiring soon, but we desperately need to keep the centre going because we can't just think about what's happening in the Mediterranean, as tempting as that might be. We also have to think about older folk here who do need the social support of one another and the closeness and the importance of that. So please get involved, please support the centres that we have, particularly the Wood Green one, because it's such a, an important centre for those who came right at the beginning. And uh, please stay with us, keep supporting the community here as well as abroad. And with no further ado, could I call Kate Ossimer, the MP for Edmonton. We are here, and I feel that this is something which I should have come into Parliament and this group should have already been set up. So I'm so proud to be one of the members that you can call upon to be part of this group. But I know that there is so many items, there's so many, there's a wish list for a lot of people in this room. And we have spoken about how important it is, is that we, we make sure that we get people around the table, the right people around the table, to look at bringing peace to Cyprus. But we also need to look at the political process and why is it that we don't have a Turkish Cypriot MP? Why is it that we've only just got Bambos here as our Greek Cypriot MP? And I feel that this group has to work very much so on building political capacity 
and ensuring that we get representatives from the community speaking for the community. Because we can do that job, and you know I will do that job, and all my colleagues that have spoken will do that job, but we also need your voices to be up here with us, speaking on behalf of the community. So I think it's important that not only do we look at the terms and reference of our group, but we make sure that we talk to all sides at all times. Because if we don't do that, we're going to fall into a trap where people feel that they're not welcome. And we don't want that. Because what we're striving for is peace. What we're si striving for is to ensure that all sides are listened to. And we need to start by doing that. So I've actually invited two of my colleagues who are councillors in Harringay, the Turkish Cypriot councillors. Well, they're not Turkish Cypriot councillors, but they come from, that's their background. <laughs> they do a lot more than that. And I actually want them to come up to the top table because I think it's important that we're also talking to second generation, third generation, and everybody is aware of our history because that's really important. So I'm sorry, ladies, I don't mean to put it on you, but here you <laughs> I want you to come up here. And I want, I want us all to remember that it's one voice, and that one voice has to make sure that everyone feels comfortable and everyone feels welcome. I'm sorry to do this, but you're my mate, so <laughs> this is what happens when your friend's an MP. <laughs> I actually want them both to say a few words um, about their journey as, as um, you know, second generation Cypriots living in Haringey, my home turf, <laughs> and also their journey to become councillors and the support that we need to give women like these two to make sure they get to the next level. Because I think that's really important, that the group is part of that journey and also everyone in this room knows that that is also an issue that we must be talking about whilst we talk about the importance of the Labour Friends of Cyprus. So, Perai, you're next. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Um, what can I say? So, as um, Kate says, I'm a councillor in the London Borough of Haringey. And for all the Cypriots out there, you know that is the heart, well, it was the heart of the Cypriot community. It's somewhat pushed out a bit more to Enfield and Barnet. But I've lived in Haringey my whole life, so for 41 years, round the corner from the Cypriot Centre, so good to see Susie here. Um, so, just from me, I mean, what I will say is I, I do believe in a free and united Cyprus. And on that basis, I think it's really important that we're all engaged in this discussion as well. And I think we're mindful. Yes, I'm a Cypriot, but I'm a Turkish Cypriot. And I think it's really important that actually people from my community as well are around the, the table as we have these conversations, because it's only together we can move forward. And as I said, living in somewhere like Haringey, you know, it's mixed community. We've always lived side by side. And actually, I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from Haringey. And I keep looking at Susie, because you know, she's, she's been there a long time as well. So there's a lot of lessons there. And actually, I think I'd like to be part of that process as well so thank you for inviting me Kate and as I said I think it's it's time we got the word out there and actually made sure that we, we do have that joint dialogue as well because I think we do want the same outcome yeah. some of us most of us yeah. all right <laughs> so thank you thank you very much thank you Pera. I just want to um, ask Amina to say a few words as well Thanks. Um, so, um, hello everybody. Sorry for being slightly late. I was caught up in the queue. Um, so, some of you will, uh, quite a few of you will, will, will know me um, because I've, I've been involved in Cypriot politics probably from, from, from the year I was born. Um, my family's always been um, kind of heavily involved in um, fighting for a long-term peaceful solution to the Cyprus problem. And I think what I would say is I'm really glad to see the setting up of a Labour Friends of Cyprus because we've had Friends of Cyprus for, for, for many years. It's an all-parliamentary group. But I think there's something significant about the role that the Labour Party has played over the years in terms of dialogue between the two communities. And I think it's important that you can only really be a, a genuine friend of Cyprus if you want to see a, a long-term solution to, to, to our problem. We've fallen into the third division of you know, international problems, but, but we really, really need, and I think our role is 
is to get our, our, our situation back up there, back in the debate so that we can get a, a, a long-standing solution. You know, there's been um, debates for many, many years about what the right solution is. I don't necessarily think that, you know, we're, we're, we're going to get into long debates about that here. But I think our role actually is to promote Cyprus, to promote um, the fact that actually, you know, we, we are still a divided capital. We are a divided island. My own family is divided by the Green Line. You know, my, my mother's family live in the south, have remained there post-74. Um, a lot of my father's family and half of my mother's family are, are in the north. So it's a really, really important issue to me. And I think it was really important that we talk about the, the, the Cypriot Centre, actually, which is an absolute flagship. And we should mention Hackney Cypriot Association as well, who are two flagships of bicommunalism that have occurred since the 1970s. And I would like to, you know, give a call out to our leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who is actually um, fundamental in the setting up of the Cypriot Centre in the late 70s, early the 80s you know he was a councillor then he helped secure the premises and I think actually we need to remember the role we have I represent a ward in in the London borough of Harringay that still has a huge um, Greek Cypriot community I represent the ladder Harringay ward that most people will recognize what it used to be referred to as little Cyprus and I think one of the most amazing things about our ward is that um, myself as a Turkish Cypriot and Gina Radamu who's represented the ward for many, many years. We are a Greek and Turkish Cypriot who represent a ward which is so important to the heart and history of our community in the UK. And it's, it's great that, you know, we fight together, we, uh, you know, for, for, for interests of the, of, of, of the local community there, but also recognise the importance of representation for some of our most isolated communities. Because I will say, and this is my final point that uh, that the interests of our community is still up there a lot of the elderly people particularly women who who live in Harringay ward are over 60 now or over 70 need, need a lot of help and support and organizations like the Cypriot Center provide that and we need to make sure that we we, we fight for that representation so thank you for giving me the opportunity to oh, speak Kate you. and really happy to be here well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm so very pleased to welcome you all to the parliamentary launch of the Labour Party Friends of Cyprus. My name is Marcus Papadopoulos, and I'm just going to say a few words before I hand over to our magnificent founder and president of this group, that there are so many people in attendance tonight really does demonstrate the importance that the Labour Party attaches to Cyprus. And Cyprus is of importance not just because the Cypriot community in the UK uh, is around 300,000 uh, people and because Cypriots have over decades uh, contributed substantially to the UK economy, but also because Britain is a guarantor power of the island of Cyprus's independence and territorial integrity. A focal point must be on what role Britain can be playing to help reunify Cyprus and thereby bring to an end the terrible injustice that has been plagued in this ancient island with its ancient civilization for 43 years. But there is a big but. In order to determine how Britain can help to end the illegal occupation of the north of the island by Turkey, there must be an inquiry into Britain's actions, or rather lack of actions, in 1974, when Britain took no action whatsoever to defend Cyprus during the illegal Turkish military uh, invasion of the island. By having failed to defend Cyprus from the clutches of Turkey in 1974, Britain fundamentally breached its duty as a guarantor power to uphold the independence and territorial integrity of the Republic of Cyprus. It is therefore absolutely <coughs> imperative that we learn of the reasons for why Britain did not act in 1974. In order to move forward, Britain's position in 1974 must be accounted for, even if, in doing so, this causes awkward, awkwardness for some in Whitehall and Westminster. So, I want to hand over now to uh, Dr Vasilis Mavru, who is the founder and president of the Labour Party Friends of Cyprus. 
this group uh, was Vasilis's uh, uh, idea. It was his concept, his concept, and he has worked tremendously uh, to establish it. And I'd also like to thank Kate or some more for having sponsored uh, tonight. So, hand over to Vasilis. On behalf of the Labour Party Friends of Cyprus group, I would like to welcome everybody present here to our event and extend a special welcome to all of our distinguished Labour MPs, peers and local councillors who have honoured us with their presence and support. We would also like to welcome the representatives of the Government of the Republic of Cyprus, especially its ambassador to the UK, Mr. Evripidis Evripiadis and the representative from the Greek Embassy, Paraskevi Tseveleki. The delegation from Cyprus municipalities, as well as representatives from the various Cypriot associations in the UK, the Cypriot Federation's president, and particularly those that have traveled from other parts of UK to lend their support for this event. <coughs> we would also like to thank the we especially like to thank the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, who is and has always been a firm supporter of our cause, which is to achieve the full reinstatement of Cyprus human rights in the occupied part of Cyprus. Also, the removal of the Turkish army of occupation and the right of the return of all the refugees back to their homes and land, subject to conditions of peace and security without the so-called guarantor rights being demanded by Turkey in order to achieve their long-term plans, which are to annex this part of Cyprus to Turkey. We are delighted to acknowledge the strong commitment that the Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn has maintained throughout all these years of the illegal Turkish occupation of Cyprus. The Cypriot community is desperately awaiting for a Labour government where the hope is on Jeremy Corbyn as a Prime Minister to honour Britain's responsibility as a guarantor powers of Cyprus independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Jeremy Corbyn's steadfast support for our cause was the main catalyst for the creation of our group, the Labour Party Friends of Cyprus. Cypriots from all over the UK have shown unprecedented interest in joining our group. It is an excellent demonstration of their passion and commitment for justice in Cyprus that we believe only the Labour Party can address and fulfil. Our group, the Friends of Cyprus of the Labour Party, was formed in order to create closer bonds between Labour MPs and Cypriots living both in the UK and Cyprus itself. Our main aim is to promote the Labour Party's core values and principles of social justice for the many, not the few. We believe this is a party which, once in power, will strive to achieve a more equitable society where everyone may benefit. We believe that our Labour Party is a party with a philosophy of promoting not just the ethical domestic policy but also an ethical and transparent foreign policy. Therefore, we will undertake to re revitalize and strengthen our bond with Cypriot communities all over Britain so that the benefits of our group may be felt by the many and not the few. Today's event coincides with Independence Day of Cyprus, which is officially celebrated on the 1st of October every year. After suffering hundreds of years of Ottoman enslavement and 80 years of British colonial rule, Cyprus finally became an independent sovereign state in 1960, following pressures exerted by an armed struggle taken up by the Greek population of the island, demanding independence and union with the Greek, with the Greek motherland. Cyprus independence declarations and agreements were not right or just to the people of Cyprus. The Turkish connection with the freshly born constitution 
of the country created more obstacles and problems than before Cyprus experienced. Turkey, a member state of NATO, had made serious plans to invade Cyprus and divide it into two distinct areas. One of which would see the Turkish Cypriot population of Cyprus having their own separate state. Turkey would govern and administer as they saw fit, with a long-term goal of effectively annexing the island to Turkey. Following an initially just few days successful military coup in Cyprus by the Greek military junta, Turkey gave the ridiculous excuse that the invasion of Cyprus took place on the grounds of restoring democracy and law and order. This was their alibi. The consequences of the Turkish invasions, invasion were the physical occupation of 37% of Cyprus sovereign territory by Turkish armed forces, initiated and activated the policy of ethnic cleansing and forced relocation of more than 200,000 Greek Cypriots from their towns, villages, and homes, spreading terror and widespread human rights violations and abuses. This created unprecedented sectarian hatred and tensions on the island. It is worth mentioning that previously to the Turkish invasion, Cyprus managed to become a modern, secular, multicultural, multi-faith Western state that enjoyed a very prosperous social and economic life, but lost everything. The forced eviction of the lawful indigenous population created a major exodus of Greek Cypriots who became refugees and still are up to the present day and are still refused the right to return to their homes and property in conditions of peace and security. Under the legitimate government of the Republic of Cyprus, it is worth mentioning that many individuals here this evening are either refugees themselves or family descendants of these very same Cypriot refugees, myself included. Since the invasion, the state of Turkey has sent hundreds of thousands of illegal settlers to the occupied part of Cyprus and has given them land and property in an attempt to create a de facto situation on the island. At the same time, replacing the indigenous Greek Cypriot population with Turks from the Turkish mainland. This was reinforced through a policy of destruction and desecration of the occupied lands, cultural and religious monuments, such as the Christian churches and other symbols of Cyprus diverse ethnicity and rich history. This policy were, was reinforced by the renaming of towns and villages in occupied areas from, from the original Greek into Turkish language. All, all of these well-documented crimes against our cultural and religious, religious heritage are aimed to wiping out our past and history and rewriting the history books according to the Turkish narrative. It is worth mentioning that approximately one third of the Turkish Cypriot population of Cyprus migrated to other countries because of the disparity, inequality, a Turkish military state of control and dis dis discrimination, as well as sectarian clashes with illegal Turkish settlers. As if this illegal state of affairs wasn't bad enough, Turkey has made no genuine effort whatsoever to find a peaceful solution to the island. Ignoring a series of unanimous United Nations Security Council resolutions, such as the 550, asking for the return of Famagusta to its lawful citizens as a goodwill measure. Furthermore, the Republic of Cyprus is facing a constant barrage of military threats naval and airspace air air violations from Turkish air and naval military exercises aimed at the territory of Cyprus. These cross violations are part of a concerted campaign by Turkey to obstruct Cyprus' sovereign right to explore its own natural resources. Instead, Turkey commenced its own oil and natural gas exploration in the occupied areas of Cyprus 
and demands a say on the free part of the island too. To make matters worse, in violation of international agreements between the two sides, Turkey is now attempting to prevent United Nations humanitarian assistance being distributed to the Greek Cypriot population enclaved in the occupied part of the island by legally imposing taxes on goods, foodstuffs, medicine, and even water. The Labour Party Friends of Cyprus are therefore asking the future Labour Party government, the Prime Minister in waiting, Jeremy Corbyn, to activate the guarantor rights of Britain, signed in 1960, as one of the guarantor powers of Cyprus independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity, and to exercise this right and assist in the removal of all the illegal Turkish military occupation in Cyprus. By exercising Britain's legal rights under international treaties, appropriate safety and security conditions should be created so that the lawful inhabitants of the occupied territory of Cyprus could return to their homes and land under the legitimate government of Cyprus without the presence of the Turkish army of occupation. At the same time, the illegal settlers should be repatriated to Turkey. We would also like to see our Labour MPs standing in solidarity against Turkey's illegal colonization of Cyprus and, and support the government of the Republic of Cyprus in its efforts to administer all its sovereign territory and utilize its energy resources without illegal interference by Turkey. The Cypriot people would place their trust in a Labour government under Jeremy Corbyn to implement its international legal responsibilities in Cyprus. We are ready to assist in achieving that end. Only a strong Labour government will bring, will bring us closer to our aims for a free United Cyprus with, without any armies of occupation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vasilis. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. There was, um, the police came in earlier James, and... Yeah, the ambassador was like... Yeah, 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 James, probably. Um, the police came in a little earlier and everything is sorted out, so please don't be alarmed by that. Um, I'd like the ambassador now to come and take the floor and um, say some kind words. Oh, you I, that I want to congratulate for the, the Labour Friends of Cyprus. Finally, as he says, I want to say hostel thing to our to our Cypriot Turkish sisters and brothers, because we are all baked under the same sun. And what the people of Cyprus want in their entirety, Cypriots of Greek ethnic background, Turkish ethnic background, Armenians, Maronites, and Ladins, because I'm not talking to you as a hyphenated Cypriot, is to live in peace, to live in harmony, to have better economic life, less taxes, please, and a good healthcare system. <laughs> and a good healthcare system. So, I want to congratulate you. I want to say that as High Commissioner, I, we are above politics. Therefore, I will not take a position on all these issues, okay? But we are here to help, to assist. We are here to be uh, uh, for everybody and not for, for for the few or for anybody else. I want to thank you. I wish you health, happiness, prosperity, every success, and, 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 and whatever you need, the, the Cyprus High Commission and the entire team. I always speak about the team because it is teamwork. Uh, I just happen to be the captain and I have to row the boat. And, you know, so a lot of other people are drawing, uh, rowing the boat, including Andreas sitting over there, who do not even have a seat to sit down. So thank you very much and, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words and full of character as per usual. So thank you so much for your support. We have with us Dr. Vasily Mavro, who organized this wonderful conversation today. Vasily, I want to tell you some words. How did the idea come to this conversation, this group? Και δεύτερον, να στείλει ένα μήνυμα για αυτού που μα ακούν στην Κύπρο μέσω του ραδιοφωνικού ιδρύματο Κύπρου. Ένα μήνυμα για του Κυπρίου 
που μας ακούν αυτή τη στιγμή από το Λοντίνο. Το μήνυμα που θέλω να στείλω στην Κύπρο είναι ότι εμείς οι, οι απόδειμοι ε, κάνουμε ό,τι μπορούμε ε, για να δούμε την, ε, τη χώρα μας ελεύθερη, τους πρόσφυγες πίσω στα σπίτια τους, τα τουρκικά στρατεύματα να φύγουν από την Κύπρο ε, και, θα, ο, και όσον η καρδιά, η καρδιά μας είναι, χτυπάει, εμείς ε, θα προσπαθούμε, θα αγωνιζόμαστε για μια Κύπρο ελεύθερη. Αυτό θα κάνουμε πάντα και τους διαβεβαιώνουμε ότι ε, έχουμε μια αρκετά μεγάλη επιρροή στο, στο Labour Party ε, και ειδικά στον Jeremy Corbyn, ο οποίος μας έχει υποσχεθεί ότι ε, όταν ε, γίνει Πρωθυπουργό και εφόσον γίνει Πρωθυπουργό, ε, θα τιμήσει την υπογραφή της Αγγλίας στις συνθήκες του 1960 σαν καρατσό δύναμης ε, της ανεξαρτησίας και της εδαφικής ακαιριότητας της Κύπρου. Έτσι προσμένουμε σε μια κυβέρνηση του εργατικού κόμματος α, για, τους, α, για τους δικούς μας τους σκοπούς για την απελευθέρωση της Κύπρου όπως έχω πει προηγουμένως. Ευχαριστώ, ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Αγαπητοί τηλεθεατές, έχουμε μαζί μας τον Πάμπο Χαραλάμπους, τον πρώτο Κύπριο βουλευτή στη Βουλή των Κοινοτήτων εδώ στο Πάρλεμεν του Λονδίνου. Ε, ο Πάμπος Χαραλάμπους μίλησε προηγουμένως στα αγγλικά, στους παρευρισκομένους και τώρα είναι μαζί μας να πει μερικά λόγια στα ελληνικά. Πάμπο, ε, μπορείς να μας πεις σε παρακαλώ τι νομίζεις, ποια ιδέα παίρνει από το, το τι έγινε απόψε και δεύτερον ένα μήνυμα προς τους Κυπρίους που μας ακούν μέσω της τηλεόρασης του ΡΙΚ ε, αυτή τη στιγμή ένα μήνυμα από το Λονδίνο για αυτούς. Ε, πρώτα απ' όλα θέλω να πω πως είμαι πολύ ευχαριστός πως είχαμε τόσους πολλούς βουλευτές που ήρθαν στην... Ε, πολλ, πολλ, πολλά ευχαριστημένος που είχαμε τόσους πολλούς βουλευτές που ήρθαν ε, να μιλήσουν για την Κύπρο πόψε και ήταν το πρώτο συνέδριο που έκαναμε μέσα στην Βουλή της Μεγάλης Βρετανίας και έτσι νομίζω είναι καλή αρχή και θα κάνουμε πρόοδος με, με αυτόν. Ε, το μήνυμα για την Κύπρο, ε, εγώ θέλω να πω πως πρέπει να έχουμε ελπίδα για να λύσουμε το Κυπριακό. Εμεί στην ε, Βουλή της Μεγάλης Βρετανίας θα βάλουμε τα δυνατά μας να βοηθήσουμε όσο μπορούμε και εγώ ελπίζω να έχουμε λύση, μα θα είναι, θα είναι δύσκολο, μα θα προσπαθήσουμε όσο μπορούμε και ελπίζω να είναι όλα καλά. Πάμε πως ευχαριστούμε. Ευχαριστώ.